What is a bucket strategy and do you really need one? Well, if you don't have an income plan and you're always tempted to push the panic button anytime the stock market goes down, well, then a bucket strategy may be exactly what you need. It's time for the My Retirement Clarity Podcast with Lee Perkins, financial planner and president of JL Perkins Wealth Management. Get ready for a good dose of inspiration, simplicity, implementation, and of course, clarity on how to successfully prepare for retirement and grow and preserve your wealth. Here's Ben George with Lee Perkins. Welcome into to the My Retirement Clarity Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Perkins. And it's hard to believe, but we are approaching 70 episodes of the podcast and our listening audience continues to grow every single month. So I really appreciate you listening in today. Our goal, as always, is to try to provide maximum value to our listeners and to try to give you some things that you can apply to your situation. So I think we've got a, a really great show today because I think the topic is really relevant anytime markets are volatile, and that's certainly what's going on right now. And so I've talked about this, this in the past, but I thought I'd take some time on today's show to dig a little bit deeper into the idea of a bucket strategy. It's nothing new, and you know this strategy has been around for a while, and we've got clients who've actually been doing a bucket strategy for years. So what is it? Well, in its simplest form, a, a bucket strategy is really nothing more than designating your money into different pools or different buckets, with each one of these buckets having a different job. Now, you can have as many buckets as you'd like to have, uh, but I don't think you need seven or eight or ten buckets, because honestly, I want your life to be more simpler in retirement and and less complicated. And so I think at some point I'm probably going to do a video of a bucket strategy because it may make it easier for you to understand things as I describe each bucket and what, you know, what each bucket is for. But for simplicity purposes for the podcast today, I just want to go over a very simple three bucket strategy. And so before I jump in, let me say that really one of the main reasons to do a bucket strategy is psychology. Our mind plays tricks on us all the times, and many times we imagine the worst possible outcome. So I think it's important for us to put forcing mechanisms in place to keep our minds from going down the road of the market's going to go down forever, and it's never coming back, and I'm going to lose all my money, and we'll wind up living in a, in a van down by the river. Um, that's a great line used by a very famous motivational speaker named Matt Foley. You can look him up uh, if you want to hear him talk about that. Uh, But anyway, we've got to figure out a way to look at our money differently. And so we can understand how money works and how how the markets work. So really, I think one of the, the biggest hurdles for us to overcome psychologically is what happens when we open our statement and we see the balance. So for most people, we open the statement and we go right to the ending balance so we can compare that to last month's balance. Were we up or were we down? And if you're like most people, that's that's really the extent of what you're looking at when you, you open that statement. You know, is my balance higher or is it lower than it was last month? You know, markets have been really pretty good for a long time, so we've sort of been spoiled. Sure, we had the COVID drop when markets dropped, you know, about 30, a little over 30% in a month or so. But the rebound happened really so quickly, it's almost like it it didn't happen. And so I would say during that time, probably what was going on, a lot of people were more worried about whether or not they were going to die or not, or they, you know, were they going to survive this whole thing than what their account balance was. And so again, the market recovered so quickly that people really didn't have time to sit around and play out the the doomsday scenarios of, of their money that much during that time. So but now we're in a little bit different period of time. And really since the beginning of the year, when we open the statements now, the balances have likely dropped pretty consistently for a couple of months in a row. And so we start to question the overall long-term plans that, that we've had in place for quite some time. So here's where I think a bucket strategy should be able to help you really worry less about things. And again, I'm just going to go over and picture, help you picture a, a simple three-bucket strategy. So first of all, let's talk about bucket one. Bucket one is really a, a very important bucket. Um, and in the past, I've, I've referred to this bucket as a war chest. 
And it's really set up to provide you income over a, a short period of time. And for most people, it's two to three years. For some, it might be three or four years. But either way, this bucket usually contains a mixture of cash and bonds. And so really the sole purpose of this bucket is to provide you income for a designated period of time and whatever that time period is that you're comfortable with. This bucket is not designed to grow a whole lot. You know, if, if you've only got cash in this bucket, that's fine. It's not going to grow very much. And if you've got bonds in the bucket, that's fine too. Generally speaking, they're less volatile than stocks and they do provide stability to a portfolio over the long term, depending on what type of bonds that you own. Uh, but again, the purpose of this bucket is to provide you income in the short term. Um, and if you only want cash in this bucket and no bonds because of what's going on with bonds and interest rates, that's fine. Um, just know that if you're drawing money out of bucket one every single month, you know at some point you're going to have to replenish uh, this bucket from somewhere else. And, and that's where buckets two and buckets three come in. So let me move on quickly to bucket two. Bucket two is set up not really for short-term income or long-term growth. I would say this bucket would be your, your balance bucket or your midterm income bucket. You can use this, this bucket for income from years four to eight or nine or 10. It's completely up to you. But this money is going to be invested with more market exposure, of course, than bucket one, but certainly not as much as bucket three. You know, if you're not drawing from your accounts on a regular basis for, for monthly income, then this bucket is, you know, certainly going to increase or decrease during norm normal uh, market cycles. But over time, it's going to grow. A lot of times people might design bucket two with, with a dividend focus. So the holdings in, in, inside of, of this bucket in, in whatever model you choose, maybe they're designed more for, for paying you a dividend rather than just long-term growth. And, and certainly you can choose to reinvest these dividends every month or every quarter or, or whenever these dividends are paid. And this is going to allow you to buy more shares of those holdings. And of course, you can switch gears at any time and then have those dividends paid out to you rather than being reinvested. And this would really be a, a great way for you to supplement your income if bucket one runs low. Again, the choice is yours. You know, you can reinvest the dividends or you can take them as, as income. Hey folks, Lee Perkins here. If you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know how much I hate taxes, and I know you probably do too. Our politicians are completely out of control. Their spending is off the chart, and you've got to be prepared for increasing taxes in the future. So we've written a book called Diffuse, Seven Steps to Protecting Your 401k or IRA from the Ticking Tax Time Bomb. You're going to want to grab a copy of this book and learn how you can protect yourself. Then you'll have to decide if you want to take action right now or if you'd rather wait until the IRS changes the rules of the game. Either way, the choice is yours. To get a free copy of the book, just text the word DEFUSE to 478-475-2050. That's D-E-F-U-S-E -E to 478-475-2050. And we'll send you a free copy. Thanks again for listening. Now back to the show. Now I want to move on to bucket number three. Bucket three is important because this is your long-term growth bucket. And, and money you put here, you're, you're giving money in this bucket permission to lose in down markets. However, it's important to remember the purpose of this bucket is to grow and to outpace inflation. So this is your growth bucket or your aggressive bucket. And I know I, I can, you know, I can hear you out then there now saying, Lee, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 73, 74 years old. I don't need anything aggressive. I completely understand where you're, where you're coming from and what you're saying here, because it, it is easy to say, hey, you know, I, I'm too old to ride out the stock market, the ups and downs at this point. My counter to this line of thinking is, yeah, you may be 73 or 74 years old. And in your mind, you're thinking, you know, you may only have five or six years left and you don't have time to recover. But, you know, unless you plan to spend every dime that you have during that period of time, your money is going to live on. Whether that money goes to your spouse or your children or whoever your beneficiary is, the money's going to be around. So I would challenge you to not put an expiration date on your money. Keep that money working for you as long as you can. And, and it's like Charlie Munger said, the first rule of compounding is to never 
interrupt it unnecessarily. And so I'm here to tell you that fear is most of the time what causes people to interrupt compound interest unnecessarily. So there it is. There's your three buckets. So let me try to put these buckets into a real world scenario. All right. So let's suppose you've got $800,000 of, of total investable assets and you need, let's say, $2,500 a month. Well, those numbers work. Plenty of money for the, the income that you need. And, and we're going to leave taxes out of this, this discussion here just for simplicity. So you need $2,500 a month from the, the assets, which is $30,000 a year. You can add this to your Social Security, maybe your spouse's Social Security, or any type of pension or other income that you've got. Um, and so let's say in this scenario, you want to put three years of, of income in bucket one. All right, so bucket one's got $90,000 in it. You know, and, and if you're like some people and you're scared of what's going on right now and you don't want to take money out of out of an account that's maybe got more market exposure and, and you're scared of running out of money, you can then draw money from this bucket simply because it, it's not invested, you know, in, in the stock market. So in the meantime, bucket two, when you fill up this bucket, it's, it's a well-diversified mix of, of equities or bonds, and it's going to be across multiple asset classes. So let's say you put $400,000 in this bucket. So you really don't want to touch this bucket for several years because now you've decided to take income from bucket one. And so what this does, this bucket gives you time to experience normal market cycles. Um, and because you've got a mixture of both stocks and bonds here, you've reduced the long-term volatility. And so this account's going to grow. It always has. It, you know, it doesn't seem like it at the time. But it always has. You know, certainly there, there are shorter periods of time where this bucket is going to be down in value. But over time, this bucket always grows. So now I want to turn into, and let's talk a little bit about bucket three. Now remember, this is your long-term bucket. So based on the $90,000 that you've got in bucket one, $400,000 that you've got in bucket two, you've got $310,000 left for bucket three. And like I said before, the whole purpose of this bucket is to provide long-term growth to eventually replenish bucket one and to fight inflation. So this bucket's going to have a higher percentage of equities than bucket two. It's going to grow quicker at times, but it can also lose money at times, which is what we're seeing now. But I think this, you know, again, this bucket is a necessary bucket, and it's really more likely to mirror what you're seeing happen, to, you know, in the, in the S&P 500 right now. Um, and remember, the S&P 500, it's 500 companies and when you see the Dow, the Dow is only 30 companies. But either way, both of these, you know, both of, of these indexes are what would be bucket three type holdings. So let me talk quickly about the S&P 500. People love it, love it, you know, when it's going up uh, and they're scared of it when it's going down. But I'm here to tell you that most people should have some money in the long term bucket. Why is that? Well, from 1950 to, to 2021, if you look at the annual S&P 500 returns, the one-year range is up 47 and down 39% in a calendar year. But if you stretch that out to a five-year rolling period, now the high is 28%, the low is minus three. Go out to 20 years and it's the high is 17% and the low is a positive six. So it tells you the market is a place to be long-term if you can stomach that, which you should. Here's one other stat. The S&P has had positive returns in 32 of the last 42 years. So it does go down at times, but it's positive 75% of the time. You just have to hang in there. So I want to wrap things up here today um, by getting back to the statement that we talked about earlier in the show. Your statement can be scary. It really can. But if you think of things in buckets or if you already have a bucket strategy in place, and you're able to compartmentalize things. And, and you just have to remember that each bucket has a purpose. If you've designed those buckets properly, then you've got a much better chance of not hitting the panic button, which is what a lot of people are tempted to do right now. You know, again, sometimes people want to have separate accounts for each bucket. And I'm not saying that you have to do that. But if that's what will help you see the big picture more clearly, then you may want to consider that. So if you're listening to the show today and you're close to your breaking point, I would tell you, don't panic. You could do something as simple right now as establishing bucket number one and putting two or three years of cash and, and income 
into this bucket right now. And so what this is going to do, this is going to keep you from totally selling out. Uh, and I think that's a great strategy for you to implement because this is going to buy you time as markets go through their normal ups and downs. That's the beauty of bucket one. It buys you time. So there you have it. That's just a brief, I'll call it a 101 level course on how a bucket strategy works. And, and it's pretty easy to implement. So if you want to discuss this further, you can, of course, go to our website at myretirementclarity.com. Um, and you can book a, a short 15-minute phone call. And you know, we've got some other resources there that you can check out. One other thing that I want to get in before we leave here today. If you know somebody who would benefit from our podcast and you think they would enjoy this show, share it with them. We would, we would really, really appreciate it. This is the number one way that our show reaches more listeners. Uh, and that's when folks like you share it with others. So thanks again. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in to the My Retirement Clarity Podcast. We'll catch you next time. Investment advisory services are offered by JL Perkins Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor and insurance agency. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, legal, or investment advice. Always consult with a qualified tax, legal, or investment professional before taking any action.